Hi, my name is Lauren Sapala. I'm the author of The INFJ Writer, The INFJ Revolution, and I've been a writing coach for over seven years, primarily coaching INFJ and INFP writers. I'm launching an online class in November all about intuitive writing. It's called Intuitive Writing, Everything You Need to Know to Never Outline Another Novel Ever Again. So in my last video, I talked about what is intuitive writing and who's an intuitive writer. And I talked about how most INFJ and INFP people are intuitive writers, um, but they don't even know it. They've been using rational, rational writing methods uh, for most of their life, which means outlining, trying to plot, trying to do character lists, story arcs, plot points, trying to logically figure out the story and how it moves from point A to point B to point C, writing in a linear way. This does not work for most INFJ and INFP writers, uh, which is why probably I have so many clients who come to me sometimes in tears saying that all they want to do is write, but they know they're not cut out to be a writer or they feel like a failed writer because every time they try to start a novel, they can never finish it. Every time they try to start a short story, they lose that, um, that juicy, delicious inspiration pretty quickly into the story once they try to nail down the details. So an intuitive writer who is using rational writing methods will usually feel very shut down, uh, very uninspired about their writing life, very uh, scared that they're doing it wrong. Uh, there's a lot of worry and shame around that. Their inner critic will kind of be raging, this raging voice in their head of negativity that says, you can't do this. They have a lot of problems and they look around at other people, usually other people who are not INFJs or INFPs who use rational writing methods and they think those people are doing it right and they're having this great writing life, so what's wrong with me? So once the INFJ or INFP writer discovers that they are actually an intuitive writer and that they are not wrong, they've just been using a method that is wrong for them, their very next question is, well, how do I learn intuitive writing? Like, what is that intuitive writing? Can it be taught? I always say, yes, it can be taught. And the qu next question after that is, how do I get into the intuitive space? Because that's something that's very hard for people in our society. It's not something that you can think your way through and it's not something that's logical. So most people don't know how to do it and they assume that they have no control over it. They assume that they have to wait for inspiration. That's the intuitive space. Well, the truth is you don't have to wait for inspiration. You can learn how to put yourself into the intuitive space. You can learn methods that will keep you in the intuitive space. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. So the first thing to know is that we live in a society that is a thinker society. That means we're very left brained. Uh, we love logic. We love action. We love to do lists. We love concrete steps. We love to know where we're going and we love to be productive. This is a very masculine energy. Now, I don't say that with any sort of judgment. Um, some men carry more feminine energy. Some women carry more masculine energy. When I speak of masculine and feminine, it's totally neutral. I'm only talking about the energy. Masculine energy is outward directed. Masculine energy is determined and it's aggressive. It, um, it determines what needs to be done and then it settles on the steps that you need to get there and it takes concrete action to get those steps done. The feminine is the complement to that or the opposite of that. Feminine energy is much more fluid. It's much more spontaneous. Um, it's much more about receiving what comes and being patient with what shows up. Feminine energy is rooted in the body. Masculine energy is rooted in the brain. Rational writing methods are a product of left brain society. Western culture is a left brain society. So all of us feel very familiar with masculine energy. Even if that's not our natural energy as an artist, we're very familiar with it. We went to school in Western culture. We usually have worked in some workplaces in Western culture. So we understand the to-do list. We understand sitting at desks in rows, receiving the assignment, um, going down the list, checking off the bullet points. We get that, even if that's not our natural flow. Feminine energy, on the other hand, is something our society uh, feels very much more conflict with. We don't encourage feminine energy that much in our society. So people don't really know what to do with it. Intuition is part of feminine energy. 
So getting into the intuitive space is getting into the feminine energy of your space as an artist. And a lot of people have no idea what that looks like. Uh, so here's the thing. If you grew up in Western culture, you are going to have a very easy time getting into the rational space and you're going to have a hard time getting out of it. You're going to have a much more difficult time getting into the feminine space or the intuitive space and it's going to be easier to pull you out of it. That's just something to keep in mind. That's not that there's anything wrong with you. That's just the way it is. So the easiest way to go into the intuitive space and stay there is to start your day there. When you sleep, your brain resets, your soul resets, your heart rests, you rest as a, an entire energetic system. You rest and reset. So when you wake up in the morning, you're kind of a blank slate. You're ready to go with whatever you want to write upon yourself. That's why I always say, if you really want to get into the intuitive space and use intuitive writing methods, it's best to assign yourself a writing day where that morning you go right into the intuitive space and you keep yourself there. So what is the intuitive space? What would constitute a morning? You wake up, you're ready to go. How do I get into this intuitive space morning? So first of all, you want to stay away from anything logic based. You want to stay away from anything that is going to make you use your critical thinking skills. So instead of waking up, immediately checking your email, where you have to filter out what's important, judge and approve of things, um, bring in that critical thinking skill of what do I need to look at right now? What's pressing? Where's the fire to put out? All of that, no. No checking email. Same thing with social media. You're having to do a lot of filtering. You're having to do a lot of critical thinking skills. Um, same thing with reading the news. These days you're having to ask yourself, can I believe this? What is true? What isn't? Um, there's a lot of judgment coming in. That's a different kind of energy. You don't want to do any editing. Editing is also a left brain activity. Um, you don't want to help your child with their homework, their math homework, for instance. That's another thing where you're going to be judging and evaluating and using those logic skills, using that critical thinking. Instead, when you get up in the morning and you say, okay, tomorrow morning, I'm going to have an intuitive morning. I'm going, to, I'm going to start my day in the intuitive space. When you get up, instead of looking at the internet, first thing, I encourage people to listen to music. Music completely bypasses the verbal center of the brain. Music puts you right into the emotion. So you can start your day with music. You could also start your day with movement, yoga, dance, even walking, just a walk around the block. You know, a walk out into your yard, um, sitting in your yard with a cup of coffee, sitting on your porch with a cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever you want, but not looking at anything where you are consuming media, you're consuming information, more just being. Instead of doing, you were being. You were sitting with a cup of tea, you're watching the sunrise, and you're just being there. Um, activities like these will put you in the intuitive space. Now, a lot of times you might say, okay, that's great. I got up, I had my cup of tea, I watched the sunrise, I did some yoga and meditation, I listened to music and I sat down and then I pushed myself to write and nothing came. So I, I failed, this doesn't work. The thing with using intuitive writing methods, it's not going to be about pushing. So you might use the intuitive writing tools, music, movement, um, being fluid, receiving, and still nothing comes. Nothing is ready to come out of you yet. That's okay. That's part of the process. Becoming comfortable with that part of the process. Becoming comfortable with the writing itself setting the pace. With the characters showing up for you, talking to you, telling you I have a story. That's all, all very uncertain. And that's something that not a lot of writers are familiar with. You don't get to control the story. You don't get to sit down and say, well, it's Tuesday morning and I have to bang out 2000 words. And if it doesn't work out that way, I'm just going to push them out. I'm just going to push out words until I'm done because I've decided. Intuitive writing is not like that. Intuitive writing, you might go a couple weeks and you're not writing anything. You might go a month and you've only written 500 words and you're not even really sure how you feel about those 500 words. That's a different way of seeing writing. That's a different relationship with writing. It's not achievement oriented. It's relationship oriented. 
And that's the difference. Getting into the intuitive space, staying in the intuitive space, is looking at writing from the point of view of being relationship oriented. So what that means, if you met someone you really liked and you said, I'm so interested in this person, I would love to date them, I just wanna spend more time with them, and they said, yeah, let's go have coffee. You might go to a coffee shop with that person and sit there for three hours talking. And you wouldn't be checking the clock, and you wouldn't be looking at a to-do list. Well, you know, I need to ask this person about their background, and if we don't kiss by the end of the date, it's a failure. Like, that would be absurd. Because what you're really there for is the relationship. You're there to connect. You're there to build the relationship with that person in whatever way that looks like. And no one knows what that's gonna look like. And you know that going in, because that's how relationships are. That's how it's gonna be with intuitive writing. You're going to be building a relationship. Uh, so that's a lot of information for today. That's just one of the things that intuitive writers can learn and can learn more about so that they feel more comfortable with their temperament and the way that they write and so that they can deepen their relationship with their artistic craft. If this spoke to you, um, if this really feels like something that is true for you inside, I urge you to check out my classes in November because I'm gonna be talking about this and a lot more stuff in depth. And I've seen intuitive writers go from totally in tears at the end of their robe, I'm never gonna finish a novel, to finishing novels, feeling in love again with their writing life, um, feeling so inspired and so passionate about writing and feeling even confident enough about it to put it out in the world and publish their books and join writing communities and say, hey, I'm a writer, I'm an intuitive writer, this is what I do, I'm an INFJ or I'm, I'm an INFP and it might look a little weird to people, it might look a little funny, but I'm okay with that because this is the way I write. My next video up, I'm gonna tackle one of the next big subjects that INFJ and INFP writers always come to me when it, about when it comes to intuitive writing. Uh, and that's worry and shame. When you're an intuitive writer, it can be really hard to find other people out there who are also intuitive writers. There's not a lot of info on it on the internet. I've searched, I've looked. Um, and so this worry and shame can set in, this like comparison syndrome of I must be doing something wrong, something's wrong with me. And a lot of time that stuff is rooted in childhood because most INFJ and INFP people had tough childhoods where they felt very misunderstood. So that stuff gets triggered. We're gonna cover all that in my next video. So look for that in your inbox or wherever you're viewing this in the next few days. Until then, happy writing.